Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. Razaban here for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me, I've got the British light heavyweight champion, uh, Shakan Peters. Uh, Shaq, um, last time I spoke to you was prior to your fight with Ch- Chad Sajdin. I hope that's how you pronounce his surname. Um, Sajdin. Sajdin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since then, you've become the British champion. How are things? How's life? Yeah, man, it's been busy. My life's normally busy anyway, but it's been obviously a lot more busier. Um, like after that fight, I had a lot of media stuff on. Um, uh, finally managed to obviously have a little light break and back on it, man. So my life's just obviously busy, you know what I mean? It's work at the end of the day. So I get a handle of these things. You know, British title now is behind me. Um, and I'm focusing and training for the next fight in November. Uh, how was your mini break? Where did you go? I uh, went to Cyprus. Yeah, it was it was decent, man. Just went there with my lady, just jammed, you know, it was good. Nice little uh, relaxing one. I could see you enjoyed it. I was looking at your WhatsApp stories every day. Yeah, <laughs> I was looking at the WhatsApp, yeah. Yeah, it was good, man. Um, we had a good time. I think, you know, just good to just, like, obviously rewind a little bit, um, taking the scenery. I've seen out these ladies, these women are like, man, they like to sunbathe and do all that, so... I just went with the floor, had a relaxing one, obviously done done a few little things out there as well myself and it was all good, man. It was good. You only fought uh, a few weeks ago um, and you're out relatively quite quickly. Obviously not yeah. as quickly as Isaac Chamberlain who came out, I think within three weeks' time, he had two back-to-back fights. Um, yeah. Is there a reason why you decided to fight so soon? I like to, If you look at like, my record and that, I like to stay busy anyway. Um, but like... Uh, as I say, you know, I, I, I did aim for myself after that fight, you know, for two or three fights before the year's out. So probably realistically now it's looking like, I don't know, probably this will be my last one for the year's out. But um, I like to stay busy, you know, I went through that fight, um, didn't have any injuries, um, you know, just done what I had to do. And then obviously, like I said, I look forward to this one. What did you learn from your fight uh, with, with Chad? Did you, did you learn anything about yourself? Did you, learn, did you see that you can make any further improvements? You know what, it's not even the fight. Like, I learned a lot about myself in training. Um, each training camp, I think all boxers will tell you, you know, they learn something about themselves each training camp. You learn something new about your body. You learn something new about you, whether that's a physical or mental thing. Um, so for me, throughout training, everything was going right. Um, you know, sparring was well. My weight was all good. Not that I ever struggled with it anyway, but everything was all good. And, um, yeah, I just, like I said, I, I learned more about myself before I even get into the fight. The fight's more or less the easy bit, you know what I mean? Um, when you put your body through all these training camps and grueling camps, then you do learn about yourself when you face those challenges in front of you um, with yourself. I remember speaking to you back in March uh, in Coventry at the press conference. This is before yeah, yeah. COVID-19 came and ruined everything. I know, and then, man. And then obviously we, we didn't have the fight immediately. We had it in what? A few weeks ago now. I don't mean to go on a negative, but I, I gotta ask you the question. Obviously, the, the UK Prime Minister has introduced further restrictions, social distancing, lockdowns of restaurants and pubs and mingling with other people, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And it and it, is, it doesn't look like we're going in the right direction in terms of it getting any better anytime soon. Um, mm. so do you feel like there could potentially be another lockdown coming in and you just want to fight while you've got the opportunity to? Um, now nah, it's like I said, I don't, I don't rush things with my career. It's what I do, what I was doing before COVID came, you know, um, I was relatively busy anyway. I'm not one to take long breaks or anything. I like to get straight back in it. Um, obviously these restrictions, we're all in the same boat, you know, not that pubs or anything's going to affect me or any of that, but we're all in the same boat. We just got to work around with it and get on with it. I just focus on what I can control. I can't control, you know, the rules what's in place now. We all have to follow the same guidelines. And um, all I can focus on is me, um, you know, just delivering, doing what I've got to do and prepare. I don't, I don't train with anything in the back of my head to think, oh, you know, fights not happening, COVID's here or anything. I train like I always do. You know, I prepare hard. If, if it doesn't happen, so be it. But 
in my head, it's going to happen, um, no doubt. I don't see why it should change, to be fair, because they've got a lot of things in place. Um, all, all the boxing bodies really have got things in place, which is going to ensure the fighters and um, you know the medical staff and so on is in a safe environment. So I don't see why this should affect anything, you know, coming forward for boxing. I know it's been announced, obviously, his next opponent in November, uh, Craig Richards. Uh, for those who don't know, you were supposed to fight Craig a while ago. Um, the match, mm. the fight was made and, and it didn't take place for whatever reasons. Um, now, obviously, you and Craig both have an opponent that you both fought very recently uh, in Chad. Mm. So do you take anything from that, the way you fought him and the way Craig dealt with him? Obviously, that fight, I believe, was a draw. Yeah, now I don't, you know, like I said, each performance I put on, I don't watch like things or, you know, everyone else is doing. I just take on, for me, that performance is behind me now. Um, you know, now I've got to focus on the new venture, which is obviously defending my belt, which I will, and, you know, facing Craig. Um, obviously, me going ahead of November, it's, I know it's not Chad in front of me. Craig knows it's not Chad in front of him, and he's going to find out that. It's, you know, a more elite fighter in front of him, which he will. But um, I don't take anything from it at all. Like I said, I just got, I've, that's behind me now. I've, uh, me and Chad's had our fight. I wish him the best with his career going forward. And I've just got to focus on my journey and path. What do you make of Craig as a fighter? Obviously, he's had some great fights. I remember being there when he fought Jake Paul, which was a clinical performance. Um, he was, I was also there when he fought Frank Buglioni which he took on very short notice, and I believe that went the full distance as well. So great experience for him. Obviously, defeat doesn't do anything other than give you great experience. So what do you make of Craig uh, as a fighter? Like I said, you know, he's done things right to get where he is. Um, but as a fighter, you know what I mean? He, do, I, he doesn't possess the things I possess and do any of the things better than what I do. You know what I mean? He, he ain't going to outbox me, in fact. And if he wants to try and make it a fight, he'll find out he'll lose in that direction too. Uh, you know, I'm glad, like, in these recent things, he's trying to say I'm Philippistic, whatever. I'm glad because this what is what a lot of them think. You know what I mean? I know I've got power. I can hit. I'm big for the weight. Um, you know, statistically, he's looking at probably my earlier fights, but I was fighting a lot of negative cruiser weights and so on. And the way I've made, I've controlled fights, how I've wanted to control fights, you know what I mean? So, um He'll find out. He'll definitely find out very sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? I haven't... I, I know there was a press conference between both of you. I haven't mm. seen it. But I just saw on your WhatsApp status where you use the word donut. Uh, yeah. What, can you tell me what happened? What was discussed? What was said? Oh, that's just me. That's just the character of me. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, um, that's how I feel. Um, you know what I mean? I'll put what I want uh, in regards to how I feel at the time. And... Uh, and about him, but um, it was just like I said, he was saying things, you know, it's the fight, it's the fight game, it's fight talk. Um, for me, it's just business, nothing's taken personal. He's saying what he's got to say. I was saying facts and things what I got to say, and that's just that, you know what I mean? He's, he's got his shot November the 14th, and everyone will see again, you know, uh, me defend my title, me beat him, and that's just it. I'm sure he'll move on to other things and, and so on, you know what I mean? It's just like I said, it's, an, it's another day for me. Are you looking at defending this belt a few times or are you looking at potentially going up the ranks and, and moving to that next level, that European type level? Um, for now, I'm just focusing on November 14th. I'm defending it against Craig. I don't look past that. Um, once I've defended that belt on November 14th, then like I said, my team will go again and we'll, we'll see if we're going to obviously defend it, which I'm sure possibly we will anyway. Um, because there's a lot of good fights, domestic level and so on. So I, I don't know. Like I said, after... Craig, after I get the victory against Craig, then my team and so on, you know, we'll, we'll talk more on that for sure. I know we sp when we spoke in March, you, when you were initially going to fight in front of fans, you said to me you're going to bring a nice little army of fans to cheer you on. But how Say that again, sorry. When, you, when we spoke in March face-to-face -face and we talked yeah. about the fight being close to Birmingham and you were going to bring a nice, mm -hmm. you were going to bring a, well, a lot of friends and family were going to come and support you uh, at the fight. That obviously didn't happen. So what was the experience like, though, fighting behind closed doors? For me, it didn't make a difference, honestly. I mean, um, everyone who's fought behind closed doors will tell you, I mean, once you're in that ring, you're zoned in anyway. Um, the only bit what was weird for me, obviously, is like, um, you know, your ring walk, you normally got the buzz of the crowd. Um, when I got the win, uh, even in between rounds, like, they don't really play, like, mad music or anything like that. You know, it's a bit more muted. Um, 
and like after when I got the win and they announced my name, it was kind of muted claps. Obviously, it's not a big, you know, big roar when you would bring a fan and so on, your fans and so on. So, um, but apart from that, honestly, it didn't make a difference to me. Um, I'm, I'm a, a boxer at the end of the day. It's only going to be me and my opponent in the ring with the ref, and I just got a job to do and get the job done. But in the back of your head, you know that they're watching anyway, and the sport's real and the sport's there. So it, it's all good. It didn't really affect me at all. And obviously able to showcase your skills on terrestrial TV on Channel 5 as well, which had great mm. viewing numbers, uh, which I saw. Yeah, yeah, it had good numbers and it was a brilliant show that uh, McKennessy put on, you know. The undercard was good. A lot of people were talking not just about our fights, about the undercards, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of excitement and um, McKennessy doing brilliant, bringing, um, you know, the boxing back to Channel 5 and also myself, you know what I mean? I can't thank him enough for the opportunities what he's um, presenting to myself. And it feels good to be, you know, a part of, you know, Hennessy Sports, a part of um, their actual, um, you know, uh, branding. And like I said, I'll just keep delivering the ring as long as they believe in me, which he does. I'll keep doing my job in the ring and uh, deliver. Just finally, Jack, uh, a lot of rumours going around at the moment. I just want to get your opinion, obviously, because you're in the fight game. Looks like yeah. it could happen. Floyd Mayweather um, fighting a YouTuber. I don't know if you saw it uh, online. Oh. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, uh, but is that good for boxing? I know we saw KSI and, and Paul fight last year, and it was two YouTubers that both went out and got themselves licensed. But here we're looking at one of the greatest of all time versus a YouTuber who lost to KSI last year. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you know what it is. Floyd's a businessman now, isn't it? And, um, you know, he's done everything right to put himself in whatever position he wants to be in. You know, I'm sure anyone, any boxer could be sitting here and thinking, no, nah, no, nah, you know, Floyd's damaging or, you know, KSI shouldn't be facing. But if Floyd offered them 50 million or how or, or how much they're all fighting for, I don't know, these YouTubers, how much actually, you know, yeah, probably about a good 20 or whatever, or 10. Um, I'm sure a lot of people jump at the chance, you know. Um, many people would spar him for free. So to fight him, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't watch what, again, I can't focus on that. It, uh, it's, that's Floyd's way of getting an easy payday. Not that it, I'm sure he don't need it, but if it presents himself for him, he's going he's gonna to jump to opportunity. So I can't knock his hustle. And um, yeah, that's good for them. I'm not really going to be something where I'm going to pay pay-per-view to watch that fight, you know what I mean? But it's whatever, isn't it? it it's, that's what he's going to do. <laughs> let, him do it, let him crack on with his hustle. It's funny though, because a lot of people would say that I'm not going to buy the pay per view, but when it gets closer to the time and the hype starts to build a little bit, and we know when Floyd Mayweather, whenever he fights, he brings the show. A lot yeah, yeah. A lot of people just generally go ahead and do buy. What's that, sorry? I said a lot of people just generally go ahead and do buy. Yeah, yeah. Nah, Floyd's a good businessman. He's not just a you know brilliant fighter, which everyone knows. You know, he's a good businessman. He's put himself in these positions, as I say, like so. It, you know, warrant, warrantedly for him, no one can, no one can question that because it's probably people, if he was in the same position, people would do the same. So I'm not going to knock what he's doing. Good for him um, if he's going to do that. But um, in regards to boxing, I don't know, because fans, there's some fans who just want to see Floyd back in the ring. So they're still obviously going to be happy to see him back in the ring. But obviously they would want to see him with another a, a, another credible opponent. Not that he's not for, for all of the credible opponents, but they'd want to see him again with someone like that. But he's earned the right to do what he has to do. All right, Shaq, I uh, appreciate your time uh, this evening. Yeah. Um, best of luck in camp. I'm sure I'm definitely going to catch up with you before fight anyway. Yeah, of course. And I, I can't say, I, can't, I don't even want to ask when you're going in camp because I know you're always in camp. So, yeah, you got to stay on it, man. got to stay on it. 100%. So I wish you all the best. Continued success, my man, and health for yourself and your family you. during these crazy times that we're living in. Um, thank you. Likewise, yourself, man. Thank you. And we'll definitely catch up with you soon. Shakan Peters for IFL TV. Thank you very much. Respect. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt.